At the heart of cultural life in St. Petersburg at this time was an engaging man called Serge Diaghilev. He was a kind of arch-priest of Russian culture and a self-appointed ambassador for it to the rest of the world. He wasn't an artist himself in the strictest sense, though he wrote and published art magazines and was immensely busy organising art exhibitions. He finally settled for being a ballet producer. This was Diaghilev's passion, and his greatest gift lay in making the complexities of ballet production work. He needed composers, of course, and it could be said that Stravinsky and Diaghilev were made for each other. Stravinsky combined a sensitivity to language, to movement and rhythm, and to things visual, as hardly any other composer has done. Diaghilev recognized this special talent, and together they unleashed in June 1910 the full-length ballet The Firebird. It was a Russian story, and the choreographer and librettist was Mikhail Fokin. The sets were designed by the Russian painter Leon Bakst, and the costumes by another talented artist, Alexander Golovin. The whole thing was brought together by Diaghilev at his best, and it was a triumph. Bakst painted this portrait of Diaghilev. It was only Stravinsky's second work for orchestra, and he'd been a full-time composer for just six years. It was a quite astonishing debut, and with this work Stravinsky shot to the pinnacle of 20th century music, a position he held until his death and beyond. There followed one of the most important collaborations of his life. Together with Diaghilev, the scenario of the next ballet, Petrushka, was devised. It was the story of a puppet at a Russian country fair, half human, half doll. It was the perfect vehicle for their talents, and to make sure the visual effects were just right, Stravinsky proposed that Alexander Benoit be the designer and help with the libretto as well. While they planned Petrushka, they toured Italy together. Benoit, the passionate exponent of the marvels of Italian art, and Stravinsky, the willing audience. The composer's mind had a strong visual element. Even his written scores look good, and much of his music was to be for the stage with its strong visual aspects. He undoubtedly inspired some of the greatest stage designs of the century, and it was all no accident. Photographs of the composer at this time show Stravinsky as extremely carefully dressed and even elegant. How many composers could cut such a dash?